Today's scripture is John chapter 4, and we'll read from verse 27 to 42. I'll read 27, you read 28, and then we'll go back and forth and read the last verse together. Just then, his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or, why are you talking with her? Then, leaving the word of God, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way towards him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat, and you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? My food, says Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and completed his work. Don't you have a saying? It's still four months until the harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the one who lives grows the ways and harvests the crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I send you to reap what you have not brought before. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they always seemed to stay with them. And, he is he is to to base. Base. and because of his words, many more became believers. They, they said, said to the woman, woman we, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and, and we know that this man really is, is the Savior of the world. world. for the um, victims of the shooting in Texas, where uh, 21, um, uh, 21 died, including many children. It's been a very difficult month in America, in both Buffalo and in, in Texas. They've had great tragedies, but, um, but we need to pray for comfort for those who have lost those they loved. And this sermon, I, I'm, I'm not going to talk about Texas or Buffalo um, in times of trouble and hardship. We can offer hope. And, and this sermon is about offering hope. When, when the world looks dark, the church gives hope. And, and I think when the Samaritan woman met Jesus, she found hope. And, and Jesus, some of this message is about living by hope. Um, but, but last week, uh, we, we left off with the Samaritan woman, and, and Jesus, he made an offer to the Samaritan woman about living water. If you remember John chapter 4, verse 14, whoever drinks the water that I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water that I give will become in them a spring of water, welling up for eternal life. Well, 
two things. It says, the water I give will become day by day, week by week, year by year. Jesus talks about a promise for those who trust in him about their future. It will become. And Jesus also talks about what this water is like. It's, it's continually springing up. Um, the, the dictionary I looked at, it said leaping up. It's jumping. It's coming out of the believer's heart. So, if, if, if last week's sermon was about this offer of living water, this week's sermon is about its outworking. If it's living water, how can we see it? If it's living water, well, well what does it do? Now, now I, I think this sermon is also about goals. Um, we, we find three groups of people in this sermon having goals. The, the Samaritan woman has a goal. The disciples have a goal. And Jesus also has a goal. Well, when we look at the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4, verse 28, then, leaving the water jar, the woman went back to town and started talking to the townspeople. The Samaritan woman, um, let's see, well, John chapter 4, verse 27, just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. Ah, the Samaritan woman, she's still talking with Jesus. We remember um, when the Samaritan woman first met Jesus, she rejected him. You're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan, I want nothing to do with you. And then John chapter 4, verse 11, she argued with him. Where is this living water? Isn't it, is it greater than this well that Jacob gave us? The Samaritan woman, she, she rejected Jesus as a Jew. She argued with Jesus as a teacher, a rabbi. And then the Samaritan woman was amazed because he was a prophet and he knew her. And last, she is seeking Jesus, Messiah. Her understanding went from Jew to teacher to prophet to Messiah. And she's still talking with Jesus. John chapter 4, verse 27, talking with a woman. She may have talked all day long, all night long. And the only thing that stops her talking is the return of the disciples. John chapter 4, verse 27, just then his disciples returned and were surprised. So, we have surprised the disciples and an adoring woman. And she leaves her jar. John chapter 4, verse 28, Then, leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town. See, um, this is a round trip. I'm leaving, but I'm coming back. 
If she filled her water, if she took the water to town, I'm leaving, I'm gone. But I'm leaving and I must come back. The Samaritan woman leaves with a goal. Jesus had a goal when he was speaking with the Samaritan woman. John chapter 4, verse 27. But no one asked, What do you want? Why are you talking with her? Jesus talked with the Samaritan woman because he had a goal. Why are you talking with her? Why is she important? I have a goal. But the disciples aren't interested in that. So, if we see three, three groups, the Samaritan woman returning to town with her goal, and the disciples returning to Jesus with their goal, and Jesus with his own goal. Well, we find the disciples with their goal. John chapter 4, verse 31. Meanwhile, the disciples urged, Rabbi, eat something. The disciples' goal is to pass through. The disciples, they, they've gone to town to get food. They've got food. Let's eat. Let's go. We were on the road six hours from Jerusalem all morning from Judea. And it's three days to home in Galilee. Let's go. Let's get home. Let's pass through. See, the disciples, they, they might have been curious. You know, they see Jesus talking with the Samaritan woman. She leaves really quickly. And they don't ask anything about this conversation Jesus has with the Samaritan woman. But she leaves her water jar. Oh, is she going to come back? Is she interested in Jesus? Um, uh, Jesus, what did you tell her? If the disciples are curious, there's this water jar right here. But they're not curious. Let's just pass through and leave. And to this, John 4.32 but he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. This sounds just like last week. Um, John chapter 4 verse 14. Whoever drinks the water that I give will never thirst. See, the Samaritan woman came to the well for physical water. And Jesus said, whoever drinks the water that I give will never thirst. Jesus' goal in speaking with the Samaritan woman, I'm going to give her living water. Jesus' goal, I'm going to make her a vessel of living water. And Jesus tells the disciples, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Jesus' goal with the disciple is to show them food that gives real strength. You can eat this food too. 
I have food to eat. But you don't know anything about it. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? So, um, Jesus offers living water that ends our thirst. Jesus offers food that gives real strength. Um, there's everything here for a meal. Food and water. Life is all about food and water. The disciples go to town because they must get food. The woman comes to the well because she has to get water. Um, but Jesus says, I have better water. I have better food. Jesus gives living water. Jesus gives food that we know nothing about. So, and Jesus has a meal that's for the whole world. At, at the beginning, Samaritans don't associate with Jews. You're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan. How can you talk with me? And Jesus' disciples know that. But Jesus' water was for the Samaritan woman. Jesus' food was for the disciples. Jesus has a meal that brings everyone together. So, so, if Jesus' goal is to give the disciples real food and to give the Samaritan woman living water, Jesus' goal is for our whole life. Um, John chapter 1, verse 50, Jesus and the disciple Nathaniel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Jesus, when he met Peter, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. Um, see, Jesus revealed himself to Nathaniel by telling him about his whole life. You will see heaven opened. Jesus revealed himself to Simon by giving him a new name, Peter. You'll be a rock your whole life. And Jesus revealed himself to the Samaritan woman, John 4, 18. You have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. Jesus told the Samaritan woman, about her whole past. Jesus tells Nathaniel about his whole future. Jesus' goal is for our whole life. Jesus knows all our past and nothing in the Samaritan woman's past could keep her from the living water. 
Jesus knows all our future. And Jesus' work in Nathaniel is certain. So now we find something that the disciples and the Samaritan woman have in common. Jesus knows our past. Jesus leads us to our future. So, if we, if Jesus' goal is about living water that's always springing up, but we don't see it, and if Jesus' goal is about food that he gives, that gives true strength, but we don't know about it. And Jesus has a goal that stretches from all our past days to our future. John chapter 4, verse 34. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and finish his work. Jesus reveals his food. Jesus' food points upward. My food is to do the will of him who sent me. Does God love me? Is there a God who cares about me? Is there a creator of this world that we see? And we're hurting or lonely. Does, does anyone really care about me? Jesus brings God close. Him who sent me. God sent Jesus so we would know our Father's love for us. God reveals himself through Jesus. Gee, God comes close through Jesus, and God saves us through Jesus. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me, and finish his work. Jesus' goal points outward. Don't you have a saying? It's still four more months until the harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. So Jesus, in talking about his food, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. His goal looks upward. And Jesus' goal looks outward. Look at the fields. They're ripe for harvest. And Jesus goal looks to himself. John chapter 4 verse 25. The woman said, I know that the Messiah called the Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And Jesus points to himself. Then Jesus declared, 
I, the one who am speaking to you, I am he. See, the harvest, John chapter 4, verse 35. Don't you understand? saying it's still four more months until the harvest? The harvest, <coughs> John chapter 3, verse 16. Neon hey, it's not in your notes. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Um, the gospel looks above. God gave his son from heaven. My food is to do the will of him who sent me. The gospel is God sent his son from heaven to earth. The gospel begins above. The gospel looks straight at Christ. John chapter 4, verse 34. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and finish his work. Jesus' work is dying on the cross for our sins. The gospel is God giving his son from heaven. The gospel is Christ giving his life on the cross for our sins. And the gospel is the confession of our lips that we make at John 3.16. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And this gospel is exactly what the Samaritan woman was preaching. John 4, 29. Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this man be the Messiah? John chapter 4, verse 30. They came out of town and made their way toward him. The disciples' hunger gave them a goal. Let's pass through. The Samaritan woman's hope gave her a goal. John 4, 29. Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this <coughs> be the Messiah? The gospel is given from God above revealed through Jesus Christ and proclaimed from our lips. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation for everyone who believes first for the Jew and then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live through faith. All that Jesus offered the Samaritan woman 
is faith. All that Jesus offered the Samaritan woman is truth. John chapter 4 verse 14. Indeed, the water that I give will become a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And she believed. This is just truth. John 4, 23. But the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. The Father is seeking such to worship him. Truth is not about who the Samaritan woman was. Truth is about who the Samaritan woman is at John 4.29, the proclaimer of the Messiah. Truth is about who the Samaritan woman will be woman living water coming out of her. Truth is that God loves us no matter what our past is. Truth is Christ leads us into the future and gives us everlasting life. And truth is this question the Samaritan woman gave to her town. Could this be the Messiah? So, Jesus had a goal when he spoke with the Samaritan woman. Jesus sowed a promise in the Samaritan woman. John chapter 4, verse 14. Indeed, the water that I give will become in him a spring of water, welling up to everlasting life. The townspeople received the benefits of this promise. The Samaritan woman had asked Jesus, John chapter 4, verse 15, give me this water. He gave it to her. Indeed, the water that I give will become a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. Jesus, he, he puts the Samaritan woman together from a broken past. And he puts the Samaritan woman together with living water. He gives her the benefit because the water lives in her. But then everyone around her receives that benefit too. Christ works in us for our own benefit. Christ works in us for others' benefit. I've preached before the, the grace that God gives us benefits us but it also benefits everyone around us. The living water welled up into the Samaritan woman for her eternal life, but it welled up for everyone around her to benefit as well. John chapter 4, verse 39. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. 
the Samaritans believed Jesus from the woman's testimony. Um, John chapter 4, verse 36. Even now the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Where's my hymnal? I, I have my fourth graders at school. They drive me crazy. <laughs> um, but this hymn, it reminded me. <laughs> sowing in the morning, <laughs> sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontime, in the dewy eve, waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping. 496. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontime and the dewy eve, waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Okay. <laughs> um, see, the kindness we sow day by day will reap a harvest. The patience we show our children will reap a harvest. Sowing seeds of kindness Sowing in the noontime and the dewy eve. When we sow, you know, I, I don't know my fourth grader's future, but as a teacher, my job is to sow the gospel with kindness in their heart. And I'm glad I had patience with my fourth graders. Sixth graders good, first graders good, fourth graders ah. <laughs> But um, even now the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life so that the sower, the one who begins, and the reaper, the one who ends, may be glad together. Jesus may be talking about John the Baptist. Because the Samaritan woman, she told Jesus, I know Messiah is coming. Someone prepared her. Someone did the hard work. Someone sowed and said, prepare for the Messiah. And Jesus came and he reaped. But whether we sow like John the Baptist or reap like Jesus, we come rejoicing because God, God's work is certain. Do you doubt that field there will have manure and Bet you. <laughs> Garlic and vegetables. Gar garlic and vegetables <laughs> in September. Because what we sow leads to the harvest that is certain to come. And Jesus sowed living water. Jesus sowed living real food. That brings a certain harvest. So, the title of today's sermon was My Food from John 434.
My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and finish his work. Jesus' goal looked above to one father. Jesus' goal looked around the world that God loves. And Jesus' goal rejoiced in workers witnessing for the harvest. Jesus spoke to the Samaritan woman with a goal, give her living water. Jesus spoke to the disciples with a goal, give them real food. John chapter 4, well, what Jesus' witnessing led to the woman's witnessing, led to the town's believing. Witnessing leads to harvest. Luke chapter 15, verse 10. There is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over oh, one oh, sinner yeah. who Where repents. John 4, 42. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. <clears throat> so, whether we are in times of sowing to prepare others for Christ's kingdom, times of reaping to bring others into Jesus' kingdom, we rejoice. The living water that Jesus gives benefits us. The living water benefits those around us. Jesus' water satisfies our thirst. Jesus' food renews our strength. The gospel, God sent his son from heaven. Jesus gave his life on the cross for our sins. And the gospel is the confession from our lips. John 3.16 Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the living water that satisfies our soul. This is the food that gives us strength from day to day. Now let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that you died for our sins. We thank you that you paid the price to, to break the power of sin and death in us. We thank you that you came to do your Father's will and that you reign in heaven. You reign in our hearts by the Holy Spirit you reign from heaven as Savior of the world, and you will come back for your church, proclaims you, is waiting for you, who rejoices in you, and finds that knowing you is better than any treasure this life can give. Give us your strength this day, and give us your strength this week, and May we be your disciples who are sowing seeds of kindness that day by day and looking for a reaping, a harvest of those who know you and find eternal life in you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.